I bet you didn't know how crucial cybersecurity is in today's world. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Today, we're diving deep into the world of cybersecurity with a breakdown of the OASP Top 10 for 2024. If you're building websites, apps, or anything really that touches the internet, this is a must-watch. We're talking about the top 10 security risks you need to be aware of to protect your data and your users. We're not just talking theory here, we're getting into the nitty-gritty of how these vulnerabilities work and what you can do to prevent them. Let's get started. All right, first up, we've got injection, and this one's a classic. Imagine you've got a website with a login form. Seems harmless enough, right? But what if an attacker could inject malicious code into that seemingly innocent username or password field? That's what injection attacks are all about. They exploit vulnerabilities in how applications handle user input. Think of it like tricking the application into thinking your malicious code is actually legitimate data. The most common type is SQL injection. SQL is the language websites use to talk to their databases, where all the important stuff like user information and financial data is stored. Now, imagine an attacker enters a sneaky piece of code into a login form. Let's say, instead of typing their username, they type something like, or, one near one. This little snippet can trick the database into spilling its secrets. The key takeaway here is that anytime your application takes input from users, you need to sanitize it. Next up, we're talking about broken authentication and how you're letting users into your application. Your authentication system is like the front door to your application. If it's not secure, anyone can waltz in and cause havoc. Attackers exploit weak passwords and vulnerabilities. Brute force attacks use automated tools to crack passwords. They can also exploit flaws in the authentication logic. Strong authentication mechanisms are key. Remember, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. All right, let's talk sensitive data exposure. This one's pretty self-explanatory. You don't want your users' sensitive data falling into the wrong hands. We're talking credit card numbers, social security numbers, medical records, you name it. If this data isn't properly protected, it's like leaving the keys to your kingdom lying around for anyone to pick up. Attackers can exploit vulnerabilities in your application to gain access to this data, either while it's being transmitted or while it's stored on your servers. Imagine a scenario where a website stores credit card information in plain text in their database. All it takes is one successful SQL injection attack and boom, the attacker has access to a gold mine of sensitive data. The solution? Encryption, encryption, encryption. Encrypting your data both in transit and at rest is crucial. But it's not just about encryption. You also need to implement strong access controls to limit who can access sensitive data in the first place. Chapter 4, XML External Entities, or XXE for short. Now we're getting into slightly more technical territory. Don't worry, we'll break it down. XML, or Extensible Markup Language, is a way to structure data, kind of like a more organized cousin of HTML. It's used behind the scenes in lots of web applications. Now, an XXE attack exploits how some applications process XML data. Here's the gist. XML documents can include something called external entities, which are basically references to external resources. These resources can be anything from another file to a remote server. Now imagine an attacker inserts a malicious external entity into an XML document that your application is processing. This malicious entity could instruct your application to do something it shouldn't, like reading sensitive files from your server. The key to preventing XXE attacks is to disable external entity processing in your XML parsers. Chapter 5 broken access control and it's all about who can access what within your application. Think of it like the bouncer at a club. They're there to make sure only people on the list get in. Broken access control is when this system breaks down and unauthorized users can slip past the velvet rope. This can happen in a few different ways. Missing authorization. If there's no proper authorization check, an attacker could simply change the ID in the URL to access someone else's account. Preventing broken access control is all about implementing strong authorization mechanisms. Verify every request to ensure the user has the right permissions. Assume attackers will find vulnerabilities and design your access control mechanisms with that in mind. Chapter 6. Security Misconfiguration and this one's all about those little oversights that can have big consequences. It's like leaving your front door unlocked because you forgot to double check. 
we're talking about misconfigured security settings, unnecessary features left enabled, default credentials left unchanged, and outdated software running on your servers. These might seem like small details, but they can be easily exploited by attackers. Here are a few common misconfiguration examples. Leaving default passwords in place. You've probably seen this warning a million times, but it's worth repeating. Never ever use default passwords. Attackers know these defaults and it takes them seconds to brute force their way in. Running unnecessary services. Every service you run on your server is a potential attack vector. If you're not using a service, disable it. It's like locking the extra door that leads to your basement. Preventing security misconfiguration is all about being thorough and proactive. Let's talk about cross-site scripting, or XSS for short. This one's about injecting malicious code into websites to trick users into giving up sensitive information. It's like leaving a poison cookie on a website. When a user takes a bite, they get infected. Imagine you have a website with a search bar. An attacker could enter a search term that includes malicious JavaScript code. If the website isn't properly protected against XSS, that code will be executed in the browser of anyone who views the search results. Here's how it works. First injection. The attacker injects malicious code into the website, often through forms, comments, or even URLs. Second, execution. When a user visits the affected page, their browser executes the malicious code. Third, data theft. The code can then do all sorts of nasty things like stealing cookies, redirecting users to malicious websites, or even logging their keystrokes. Preventing XSS attacks is all about sanitizing user input and encoding output. Make sure that any data coming from the user is treated as data, not as executable code. Chapter 8. Insecure Deserialization. Unpacking Trouble. Now we're getting into the world of insecure deserialization. This one's a bit more technical, but it's important to understand because it can have serious consequences. Serialization is the process of converting data structures into a format that can be easily stored or transmitted. Think of it like packing a suitcase for a trip. You take all your belongings and organize them neatly so you can easily transport them. Deserialization is the opposite process, unpacking the suitcase when you reach your destination. Now the problem arises when applications deserialize data from untrusted sources without proper security measures in place. Attackers can exploit this vulnerability by sending malicious serialized objects that, when deserialized, can execute arbitrary code on the server. Preventing insecure deserialization attacks involves being extremely careful about what you deserialize and where you're getting that data from. If you must deserialize data from untrusted sources, make sure you have strong validation and security measures in place. Chapter 9. Using components with known vulnerabilities don't build on shaky ground. Next up is using components with known vulnerabilities. This one's pretty straightforward. Don't use software that's known to be insecure. Think about it. When you're building an application, you're often relying on third-party libraries, frameworks, and components. These components are like the building blocks of your application. But what happens if those building blocks are faulty? If you're using components with known vulnerabilities, you're essentially building your application on a foundation of sand. The good news is that preventing this vulnerability is relatively easy. Keep your components up to date. Regularly update your dependencies, Use vulnerability scanners to identify any known security holes in your code base. Chapter 10. Insufficient logging and monitoring. Staying blind to threats. And finally, we have insufficient logging and monitoring. This one might seem less exciting than the others, but it's crucial for detecting and responding to security incidents. Imagine you have a security system in your house, but you never bother to check the footage or arm the alarm. What's the point of having it if you're not going to use it? That's what it's like having insufficient logging and monitoring in place. Without proper logging and monitoring, you're essentially flying blind. You might not even realize you've been breached until it's too late. Implementing effective logging and monitoring involves establishing a clear logging strategy, collecting the right data, and using tools to analyze logs and generate alerts. Remember, the sooner you detect a security incident, the better equipped you'll be to mitigate the damage. Outro stay safe, stay secure. And that wraps up our deep dive into the OWASP Top 10 for 2024. We've covered a lot of ground today, from injection attacks to insufficient logging and monitoring. Remember, 
Cybersecurity is an ongoing process, not a one-time fix. By staying informed about the latest threats and implementing the right security measures, you can protect your applications, your data, and your users. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Stay safe and secure, and see you in the next video.